Hi guys, welcome to the channel. I have just been on, I'm not supposed to say where I've been or who it was for, <clears throat> but I've just been on a motorcycle research project. Uh, I was tagged in a thing on Facebook where <clears throat> uh, a company was advertising for people with uh, a GS 1250 and a GS 1250 Adventure and they wanted people that basically have bought these bikes to be involved in this motorcycle research project so I filled out the form online I got like approved there was only a handful of us there and basically I, I'm limited to what I can say I had to sign something hang on well we all had to sign something uh, hang on one moment caller just got to concentrate where I'm going here I think I'm in the wrong lane but it's alright I can make it up as I go along what's that oh Multistrada let me just get me bearings a second and then I shall carry on <laughs> oh, is it? Is it? Thinks he's going to lose me, but I'll let him go. I won't be able to use this video. So yeah, they were basically showing us a, a prototype of their new model of their bike and would we go for it and to be fair on paper what they've come up with is pretty spectacular and like I said to the lady um, I said it's all very well looking at all the spec sheets and, and in theory looking on paper it looks amazing and uh, yeah I would have one over this yeah I would um, but it's all very well looking at it on paper a spec sheet and I said to her I said the spec sheet of a, of a lady is awesome but in reality it's not it's not always what it what it should you know it's not always as good as what you think it's going to be um, so time will tell I reckon at the bike show at the NEC there might be one there but uh, it was a little bit rushed to be honest I mean I've ridden up you know just over two hours from Western Supermare to do it that's not their problem where I come from but it was all a little bit you didn't get time to analyze all the the technical stuff enough to make a decision on because basically you had to make a decision you had to tick boxes like they'd show you like eight bikes and their bike being one of them the, the prototype being one of them and you had to make a choice um, which bike you would go for based on the spec sheet but it was a bit rushed you, so I didn't get time to actually read all the specs you know um, they weren't really interested in hearing what we had to say as much as I thought they would like if I'd have had the opportunity I was gonna say well I did say a little bit but you know like this bike the BMW 1250 GS Adventure could be the best bike in the world if only they'd done a couple of different things example the connectivity on this TFT actually working 100% without all the nonsense sometimes you can be riding along and I'm sure some of you guys will know this you'll be riding along and it just loses connectivity and you, you, you listen to your music one minute next minute you've got nothing and then you've got to stop at the side of the road and for some mental reason you've got to um, go into phone pairing and headset pairing pair new headset and all this and you can't do that while you're riding along because you can't go into the settings um, stuff like that so that's a pain in the ass 
um, the switch gear should be um, the switch gear should be illuminated that would that would be a, a massive thing because you're riding along at night I've had this bike for two years okay I've got a lot of bikes but you know and sometimes I'm thinking hang on where is everything but it's not a case of if I only had this bike I'd know I, I, I've ridden it for two years but I still can't find stuff in the dark so that would be good and also heated seats uh, front and rear you know pillion seat and the rider seat should be not on all models but on the TE exclusive that should be standard okay so that that's that should be um, you know part of the uh, what am I trying to say here basically there should be an option from new to have heated front and rear seat um, one thing that this uh, this prototype bike said in the spec sheet was um, um, adapt is it called adaptive cruise control where it, it senses how far away you are from the bike uh, a car in front of you or whatever and it will adapt your speed uh, I'm not interested in that you know to be honest with you I'm not bothered about that oh th this prototype bike was a little bit lighter than this a tiny bit lower than this because like I did say to them there but then they, like I say they weren't really that interested in actually hearing us say anything they're more interested in us ticking boxes on a piece of paper um, but I personally think I don't know what you guys all think but I think one of the main reasons why a lot of guys and 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 women too i guess um although you don't see a lot of women on gs adventures to be fair uh i think one of the main reasons that people don't buy a gs adventure is the height um because it is a tall bike i mean i'm five foot nine and i, I am maxed to be honest I, I couldn't have anything taller than this i could do with it really being um i don't know an inch an inch lower uh oh this this prototype also it said has adaptive ride height so basically like harley davidson's pan america although i haven't seen it do it yet and my mates just bought one and i went out with him friday and i i, I haven't seen it do it yet but apparently as you're coming to a stop the bike lowers down the bike you know it, it lowers and as i've said on the adventure bike video which you might see this one before that to be fair but i find it completely bizarre how um without listing all of them but just throwing a few out there bmw's gs uh, Honda's Africa Twin, Suzuki's V-Strom, uh, what else we got, uh, have I said the Honda Africa Twin, um, Yamaha's Tenere, all these adventure bikes, okay, so all these manufacturers come up with all these adventure bikes, not one of them has got the suspension that automatically lowers itself as you're coming to a stop, so you know whether you're coming up to traffic lights or roundabout whatever you're coming up to a stop or, or it gets to a certain speed and then it automatically lowers none of them do that but the well-known adventure bike manufacturer harley davidson um they've come fresh into the market with a brand new adventure bike and boom it's got this suspension that apparently lowers I was talking to the lady on the Harley Davidson stand at the Adventure Bike Festival and she did she was adamant yep yep it does do it it does do it <clears throat> but I've looked at my mates and I haven't seen his do it yet but he's only had it a couple of days uh, and I find that completely bizarre that nobody else has come up with that and Harley Davidson have but anyway this uh, this prototype it had that listed so basically on paper it should be a better bike than this whether it is in reality or not remains to be seen
I just thought I'd share something with you. It might be a bit weird for me to tell people that I don't even know, but I just wanted to stop here because I just want to tell you something. Because this YouTube channel is a little bit like a story of my life, I guess. No parking, farm access, but no mind that. Right, see this little bit of road here? Well, actually, it looks like a pavement. Well, it is a pavement, but still. Okay, make yourself comfortable. I'm going to tell you a little story. <clears throat> okay, years ago, 1990, 1991, 1990. No, it would have been 91. Anyway, get to the point. Right, I had a job driving a seven and a half ton truck every night from Bristol back every night for two years. So I knew every pothole in the road. Now, I used to go motorway all the way and then after about, I don't know, nine months or whatever, maybe a year, I got bored. I was, I, it was a nightmare. I was, I was struggling to stay awake. It was so boring. So I discovered I could come this way, up the A46, right? Get off the uh, M5 at Junction 9, Tewkesbury. Come through this way. Made the, made the whole job a lot more interesting and, and then I carried on. I did it for two years. Anyway, one night I got to work. I started at midnight. One night I got to work and my lorry had been broken into. My CB had been nicked. Yeah, that's a big turn four. Uh, the CB had been nicked. My stereo had been nicked. The truck had been vandalised, window broken, so basically I couldn't go to work that night. Okay, so I rang my boss, the, manage, the transport manager, told him what happened. He went, all oh, right, okay, I um, better go home then. So I went home and he said, do you mind going tomorrow in the daytime instead? If you go home, get some sleep and then come back in the morning when we're, when we're in and, and take one of the other lorries and do it in the daytime. I said, yeah, yeah, okay, no worries. Went home, went to bed, got up, went back to work, got on a different lorry and did the same job, exactly the same, but in the day. Now, I'd never done this trip in the day before. Uh, okay, so I'm coming back this way on my way back to Bristol. Now, back then, they didn't have um, um, Gatsos, uh, speed cameras, uh, stuff like that. A speed trap back then was two lines of rubber in the road and like from point A to point B that measured the time it took you to get over these strips of rubber in the road, okay? So back down the road there, I've gone over, I've basically gone over a speed trap. Uh, I already had nine points on my license. That's another story. Um, so yeah, I was speeding, um, you know, hands up, I was speeding, I was just so used to doing this trip, I wasn't speeding by much, but I was speeding at the end of the day, so that's it. I got pulled over here, I already had nine points on my licence, um, so basically I was going to have an extra three points for speeding, so I was going to lose my licence for being stupid. Um, <laughs> basically everything had gone wrong at that point uh, my car blew up on the way to work <laughs> it's a long story but basically the car blew up uh, a load of things happened and this was basically the, the the final straw the straw that broke the camel's back as they say um, so So basically, I was going to lose my license. So when I got home, I um, uh, I told my uh, my girlfriend at the time what had happened. She uh, blew a gasket. She went off on one. Uh, how could you be so stupid? You're going to lose your job. We're going to lose the house. And there's a bit more to it than that. But basically, in summary. Um, I lost the plot a little bit and uh, decided uh, it was time to check out. So, um, 
Yeah, I, I won't say exactly what I did, but basically I uh, put on Iron Maiden live after death <laughs> and uh, decided that was it then, uh, enough's enough. And um, anyway, next thing I knew I was in hospital um, and uh, yeah, you don't need all the details on that, but basically, um, so then what happened, believe it or not, uh, my dad worked abroad doing four to six weeks abroad and then a week home my dad was away um, my dad came home not very impressed uh, obviously um, long story cut a bit shorter I took my HGV test a few days later with a broken hand but that's another part of the story my hand was broken but anyway took the bandages off, went and took me HGV, passed my test, unbelievably, with everything that had gone on, passed my test. I'm condensing the story here for you guys. Sorry, I just thought I'd share this with you, because I'm here, and so now I'm telling the story. Uh, so, I passed my test. My dad got me a job working away with him, driving trucks abroad. Uh, so I basically, three days after passing my HGV test, <laughs> I'm away abroad with my dad, driving a brand spanking new truck, a brand new trailer. So it's quite weird because stopping at this point here, literally my life all changed. Um, it was like I died and been reborn as somebody else it was completely bizarre and I used to drive along in a brand new Arctic in Spain or Italy or wherever driving along thinking to myself hang on a minute five minutes ago I was driving a seven and a half tonner to and I was only just old enough to be doing the job well in actual fact I, I was only 22 I, you know most people didn't do that till they're 25 but Anyway, so yeah, so I just wanted to share that with you because um, this is where it happened. This is on this bit of road here. I know it's all my fault and I shouldn't have been a dick. I, I do realise that. I shouldn't have been speeding in the first place. Um, and I'm not saying that that, you know, was a good thing because good things came from it or anything like that. I just wanted to stop here because it's just weird that I must have probably been sat, where would I have been sat? I would have been sat about here in the lorry at this exact point in 1992 thinking shit's just gone down big time all my own doing and yes I was stupid and then from from here so much changed Oh, i better tell you, hadn't I? How did I get a job driving an Arctic if I was going to lose my licence? Well, this, you won't believe me, but I'm not making it up. Um, everything I ever tell you on this channel, by the way, is true, OK? I am writing a book as well. Um, and, and I'm a bit anal about everything in the book has to be true. There's no, there's, there's no bull, OK? Basically, what happened was... Um, <laughs> This will sound unbelievable and you won't believe me, but I'm not making it up. My dad um, either rang um, Staffordshire or Warwickshire police or wrote a letter, I can't remember, um, and they and, and told um, the chief superintendent what had happened. Um, and he said if, the, if, if my dad gets a letter from the hospital, explaining all the circumstances there is a bit more to it than what i've said if he explains all the circumstances he'll look into it so basically my dad got a letter from the hospital saying what had happened um my dad said to him look if if my son is uh you know if you can be a bit lenient so he keeps his license there's a chance i can get him a job working abroad with me and he'll have a new life and blah 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 and fair play, I mean, I'd love to, to meet that chief superintendent because he literally gave me a massive chance, okay? And, and, and they I don't think they let me off. What, what happened? Yeah, they did. They let me off. I didn't even get the points. 
so I did I, I basically got the job driving abroad and I had nine points on my license um, so yeah so I kept my license um, and everything was good from there basically sorry if I've bored the asses off you but as I knew I was coming to this section here I just I just wanted to stop here for a minute and and then I thought I'd just share that story with you I'm sorry if you've all like fell asleep and that but I just I just wanted to stop here and and share that with you guys Nineteen ninety-two. Yeah, and that's not a lesson. I'll go and go and speed, and then say, do stuff, and say to get off of it. Because obviously, I don't think things like that would happen nowadays. But um, anyway, that's that. Well, this don't look so good, does it? Don't smell so good either. Summit's going down. Oh yeah. Oh dear. Oh dear. That happened to my dad in France. But that's another story worst accident France had had for uh, 11 years it was it was in all the papers yeah the wheel the grease in the hub has caught fire see nightmare what well, that then guys thanks for tuning in and you'll uh, on the next one